Hi everyone, I'm Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted, and in today's video I'll be showing you how to paint this really pretty moon painting. It's a half moon, and I did this as part of a challenge I'm following on Instagram from Doodle Washed. It's the Doodle Wash June 2020 is the hashtag for that, so if you want to follow along and do any of their prompts. And the prompt for June 6th is half moon. So I made a really pretty half moon here with uh, some floral decorations here. And I wanted to practice uh, doing some white flowers. And I'll show you how to mix colors up so that you can do this color flower um, since they're not actually white. So uh, follow along with me. And if you do one of these paintings, I would love to see it. Make sure you tag me on Instagram, Mrs. Hand Painted. Have fun painting along with me. All right, to start out, I'm just going to draw out um, just a little base rough template for the moon shape that I'm going to use and I want the moon to be centered but I don't if I put the circle in the middle of the paper like this my moon will end up over here on the side so just kind of adjust so I'm not doing a full circle moon I'm just doing the half so I found something that's a big circle and then I found something I have these little circle templates from simple stories that I use for scrapbooking and I'll use that for the inside cut out part of the moon and I kind of wanted to just be a little bit turned up so I'm gonna trace around this part way up there and then if that meets up I guess I should have gone up a little bit higher on this side where I want that cut out to be You know what? I should have gone over just a tiny bit more. I'm going to have to erase a little bit here. Okay. So, erase out that first line I made. There we go, that's better. Get rid of my eraser shavings. All right, so just kind of look and fit that inside. There, I have a nice little crescent shape. And what I want to do is I'm going to do some little flowers right here and then I'll fill in the moon. I'm going to get my other kind of eraser doesn't have so much shavings. I should have just used this in the beginning. Get rid of my extra pencil lines. I'm not very concerned about the pencil lines on this because the inside of the moon will be a gray color anyway, so I'm not going to erase any of the extra on that. And I, I just did that with a, this is a water-soluble graphite pencil from Faber-Castell. And I just got some brand new brushes from Princeton. Uh, the Neptune series. I just got a whole bunch of these, so I just wanted to test some of them out. I, I have a bunch here that I was using earlier that are just drying still, so I'll probably use a bunch of those. All right, before I do the moon, I want to do my little bit of flowers that I wanted to put right here. I'm going to do maybe two flowers and a little sprig of berries or leaves or something. We'll see. Um, you can really do any color you want. I'm going to try and do some more of the white flowers. I don't do that very often, so I just kind of want to practice that. And I'm going to make up my own uh, kind of grayish tint here. Let's see if I can find a nice spot on my palette to mix that up. I'm going to use my, I have some ultramarine here. And I'm using the round size 8 here from the Neptune by Princeton. And I've got some burnt sienna just a little bit, just to give myself gray. I want it to be more on the blue side. Now I need to dilute this down a lot, so I'm going to add a lot of water. One thing I've noticed, I've had a couple of these brushes in the past, but I just had a six and a two, so I invested in a whole bunch of them. They're very thirsty brushes. They're not real natural hair, but they're a synthetic squirrel hair, um, so they're trying to uh, mimic the properties of natural squirrel hair with this brush. So it is a very thirsty brush, so be aware that you're going to have a lot of water and you don't want to have drips or extra water. So maybe tapping that off on the edge of your palette or drying off on a towel beforehand, doing some test swatches before you use the brush. That's a good um, rule of thumb to do. So I've got that very diluted here. 
And I'm going to just do a little test swatch here of my color. I usually have little scraps laying around. I've got, and this isn't the same type of paper, but at least I get the color. That's very, very pale. Maybe even a little more water. So I'm just removing the excess water, and then I can go back and get what I want. There, it's very pale, barely noticeable. Okay, very pale. And I'm gonna do just a little, um, maybe a rose type flower here. And actually where I'm gonna put these flowers, I'm gonna go ahead and erase my pencil line because this is gonna be very pale and they will show through. So I'm just gonna erase that one little part of the, of the moon there. I'm gonna do a little rose. So I'm just gonna do those very tiny little C shaped strokes in the center. Go around, overlapping. All right, it might be a little hard to see on there because it is very pale. I am going to do another flower with the same color, but more of like a five-petaled flower, maybe coming out from behind, maybe more of an anemone type of a flower. I'll do some circular shaped petals here. I'm going to have it coming out from behind that rose, so I'm not going to show all of the petals here. Right, and I want to do just a tiny center in that rose, just a little bit. I'm going to do, I have a little yellow ochre here on my palette. I'm just going to do a little bit in the middle. Yeah, it might have been a little too much. I'm just going to pick some of that up. I'm just going to spread that around tiny, tiny bit. All right, and for the center of this anemone type flower that I've got here, I want to do some indigo in the middle. So I'm actually, so I'm gonna dry that really quickly. Okay. And I'm actually just gonna go around where my center is, the very tiny little dots. And then if you wanted to use a smaller brush for this, go ahead. I, I'm just practicing with the very fine tip of this. I'm just doing it's a very, very pointy brush right now because I it's brand new. So my previous brush that I had was around six and I did know in a previous video when I was making the roses, if you've watched that video, that it didn't have a very pointy tip and I didn't know if that was just uh, the way they used to make them a couple years ago when I first bought that or if it was just because I abused my brush a bit too much. Alright, so I went in with my point of my brush and I just did some really fine little lines coming out from the center. You notice I'm not going around here because this is where my rose is in front so this is all from behind. I kind of just picked where the edge of that was. Made some fine lines and then I did very tiny dots at the tips of those lines and some at the tops of imaginary lines too. Just to give that the center and I'm going to add maybe a small little sprig of leaves and I want this to be a really really pale olivey green maybe I'm going to take a little bit I've got some undersea green here I'm going to add just a tiny bit of that indigo to it make it a little more bluish actually more of my color that's what I'm going for right there It's a little dark. I'll dilute that down. There, that's better. And this is really just personal preference here. If you want to do darker colors, uh, different colored flowers or types, and I'm just gonna do some really basic little leaves coming out, and I'm doing a very small point there and I'm just applying pressure and then you lift up to get the point at the top so put pressure down and then lift and as you get better and more practice with this you can do it faster more accurately 
I'm still practicing all the time. So I've got a sprig of leaves there. Let's see, I think I'll just do a couple maybe coming out this way, but not as many. I'm going out from the center for those side leaves. And the more pressure you apply, the thicker your leaf will get. Your leaf will get. I'm not doing a lot because I don't want a very big leaf. And if you need to turn your paper for this, um, that's why it's nice to, if you um, are using a block, you can spin it around or if you tape it down to tape it down to a piece of chipboard cardboard or a board i'm gonna go one more leaf this way okay you know what i think that looks a little odd without a center leaf i'm gonna just go ahead and extend another one out okay now i want to balance this out by having something on this side and i do like that indigo that i've used I think I'll just do like some little berries here. Berries are nice little filler items. I'll just do a circle shape and then leave a little white area there for that little highlight for where the light would be hitting that berry. Do it at a curved angle so that you um, have the illusion of the roundness. Well, this is very difficult with a large brush. I really should have switched. I'm committed now. And if you have too much water, because I thought these are very thirsty brush, I'm just uh, kind of scraping off the extra paint onto the palette there. And if you need to get your tip back, you can just go back and forth across the palette, and I'll bring your, your nice pointy tip back. that very concentrated, almost black. Let's see, I'll do another one down here. And I am just going to set that brush down for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and have a four here to do my, my stems on those berries because I just don't want to mess that up. I'm just going to use that same uh, bluish green color I mixed up with the indigo and the undersea green. And I'm just going to do some simple little stems coming out of there. I'm going to do tiny little leaves. That's a nice little addition. All right, the next step will be to do the moon. All right, I'm gonna go back to my round size eight that I was using, and I wanna make this a nice gray color. And I think I would like to add in some other hints, maybe a little bit of purple and the indigo. Um, so I'll mix those in together. And I actually have a color in here called neutral tint. Uh, another one would be like a Payne's gray would be really pretty for this. Uh, or if you want to mix up your own kind of gray color using ultramarine and the burnt sienna like we did for the white flowers, you can use that as well. Um, go back right there. Uh, I just wanted to try out this uh, neutral tint for this particular project. All right, and I'm going to start out by just going in with some clean water and just doing an even wash across my moon so that I can put my colors into the moon and have them work their watercolor magic. And just taking care to go around your other painted elements here. You can just kind of leave a space for right now. You don't need to go right up to the edge of them and then we can go back around with a smaller brush later and just kind of fill in a light wash around that area so they don't get um, bled into. to 
just gone up to the edge there. Okay, so before that dries, I'm going to go ahead and take my neutral tint and add in dab it in in some areas and then you can spread it out in others we can leave some white areas I'm actually going to take a tiny bit of that indigo as well and just dab tiny little dots of that in there and then I can push that around to make that blend in And then as you get closer to those elements, just take the paint that you already have and push that very carefully up to the edge of your elements. You'll get a nice crisp line here on your edge where you didn't have the water. I'm starting to lose my wetness here, so I'm actually going to go back with some clean water and add more back in there. I, the paper I am using, I forgot to mention, is a 100% cotton paper, so it will dry at a different rate than if you used uh, a cellulose-based paper or others. This is, um, excuse me, Fabriano Artistico paper, and I have noticed that it dries at different rates than other cotton papers, say arches. So every paper is different, so just practicing and getting used to what materials you have and try a little in. And if that is uh, getting, like there, it's a little bit heavy with the indigo. So you can just get your brush wet again, just kind of blend that in. I'm going to end up getting some blooms here if I'm not careful. So you don't want to have too much water um, kind of puddling up because you'll get those feathery looked bloom shapes that happen when the water dries and um, it was it was ponded up in areas. So trying to avoid that. And I kind of forgot to leave some little more white areas down here. I'm talking and then I don't focus on what I'm painting. And if you do get some of these blue edges, like here I got one, I'm just trying to just blend that out with some water on my brush, but um, get some water and then you can dry it off on your towel your paper towel so that it's not too wet. I'm just going to blend that paint that I already have in there in there so that it's just a very, very pale gray color going down. And I got just a little too much over my edge of my flower. Just trying to smooth that out. All right, I want to add a few little darker areas here, so I'll go back to my neutral tint here. I'll just add in some darker areas. It's a little more concentrated. And you can really just be pretty random about it. Wherever you feel is a nice area that needs a little more contrast maybe just whatever looks best for you all right here I put in a little line of paint so I'm going to make sure I blend that out so it doesn't look like a line there we go and if you put it down in a dry area like this see I started getting a little more of a harsh line there you can just take that damp brush and just kind of blend it in so that you don't end up with those harsh lines because when we do wet paint on dry you get a crisp line but wet into wet gives you those nice blurred edges which is what you want for this moon and i got a little bit of a harsh line there i just want to smooth that out just a tiny bit a little more dark and really you can take some of the pigment that you already have and just with your damn brush you can pick that up and move it around. You don't need to get too much more paint on your brush. Alright. 
a certain point you need to stop touching it. <laughs> I want a little darker right up here. Just take a, take a moment to look at it every, every minute or so um, and just look back and really see where do you need to actually add some more because you can get close to it and then just start going too crazy and sometimes it happens to me where I'm just I'm not taking a moment to really examine it and then I just go one step too far because I've added too much. There, I really like that. That turned out really pretty. I think this would make a really nice painting for a nursery or a bedroom. You could put a name here or the the word dream would be really pretty. I might go ahead and add that later. Um, otherwise I think this turned out really pretty here. Maybe I'll just do a little darker here just so you can see the edge of that moon. Just before you call it done, just kind of take a look and see if there's any areas you want to add a little more color to. And this was really great practice doing some white flowers as well. I don't do white ones very often because I find them quite challenging. And they're hard to keep really pale because sometimes I just get too dark. And I think I did a good job there keeping that a really pale gray and adding that little bit of yellow in the center really brings that out and makes it pop. So have fun painting a moon. And if you made one, I would really love for you to share it with me. You can tag me on Instagram. Use my handle, Mrs. Hand Painted. And make sure you subscribe so you can catch all my latest tutorials that I post weekly on YouTube.